welcome to the Motivated Martial Arts Podcast. Your hosts, Jackson White and Gavin Cook, have been friends and Taekwondo training partners for over 40 years. This podcast will bring you a mixture of their life stories, martial arts, and business experiences to motivate you in life and throughout your martial arts journey. Adding in a mixture of inspiring interviews and some of the best traditional martial artists around today. So over to your hosts, the Motivated Martial Artists. Welcome to the Motivated Martial Artists Podcast, Volume 2, with me, Gavin Cook. And me, Jackson White. And tonight we're with nobody, just me and Jackson. So, yeah, so you've got you to suffer just the two of us today. <laughs> this isn't a bad thing. Or it could be a bad thing, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, sure. uh, so we've got no guests tonight, so we've just really just finished our first year of podcasting. And who would have thought we'd be sit, we'd sort of be sat here a year down the line... <coughs> I've been recording such awesome episodes with some great guests. So we just wanted to do an episode today just to talk about our journey over the last year, things we've learned and things we've done. Some of the highs, some of the lows, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's been both of them, Jackie. Yeah, be, there's been plenty. For sure. But, so some yeah. of the great guests we've had on, some of the trips that we've been on off the back of it, um, namely our USA trip, which was pretty awesome, Jackie. Yeah, I think I've still got a hangover from that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I slept for a week after that one. My wife was like, my gosh, Gavin, what, we, what did you do in America? <laughs> well, we didn't, we didn't what sleep, stay, did what we? What stays on tour? What happens on tour stays on tour, Gav. You know that. But we didn't sleep, did we? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Right, Jackie, so um, how should we start this off? Do you want to talk about, um, I suppose, let's, let's try and, let's try and yeah, just, yeah, cast our mind back. We, cast our mind back a year. Up. Cast our mind back a year when we first sat down at that table, we got the microphones out. How we well, let's, go, let's go a step before that. Let's talk about when you, were, when you had the idea of doing a podcast. Okay, so yeah, a good friend of mine, um, Mr. Philip Scaife, um, I was sat in his garden and was having a cup of tea and was just talking about business. And we just recently started a property business um, sort, of, uh, sort of three or four months before. So I was just talking about that. And one of, uh, one of Phil's friends popped around, a guy called Dean Booty. And um, I was chatting to him. I hadn't really met him before. I'd spoke to him a couple of times. I said to him, so what do you do then, Dean, for a living? He goes, oh, I'm a podcaster. I said, okay, well, tell me more about it. He goes, well, you know, I've got, a, uh, I've got a betting podcast, and he was just about to start a new podcast. And he just told me through it, and he was just, you know, the journey just sounded awesome. So I came straight back to Jackson and said, Jackie, we've got to start a podcast. We've got to start a podcast. And, it needs and, and what, was, what was my first response? Who the hell wants to listen to us? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, but it's funny because, you know, when we talk to people about podcasting now, I mean, we're sort of big, big advocates of podcasting now, having done it. And I speak to lots of people in different businesses and say, you guys, you need to start a podcast. And what do they say, Jackie, the first thing? Who wants to listen to me? Exactly. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, really, it's really interesting. So for, from my mindset, someone that, you know, I'm a, I continue to look at self-development. So I've been, you know, as, as you know, Gavin, I suppose the audience knows as well, we're heavily into our audio books. And I suppose podcasting wasn't really a platform, a self-development. In my mind, I hadn't perceived that as a self-development platform. <clears throat> you know, I thought it was potentially just a couple of people or someone just on there, on, on air, talking to themselves. So I hadn't really investigated. So when you, when you mentioned that, my natural instinct was, oh, you know, who's going to listen to that? And more importantly, who's going to listen to us? What do we know? What's our subject matter? What are we a subject matter expert in? You know? Um, so the natural response was, oh, I'm not sure about that. And I was, I was a little bit sceptical, to say the least, wasn't I? Yeah, no, yeah he was. And, and so, the, so then we went out and we, we downloaded a, a podcast course, um, which Dean actually recommended. Didn't recommended he? to us, yeah. He sent it over to us and we downloaded that. Um, went and bought some microphones and um, we just got, I just got a, new, um, a new property that we're doing like a, like an, uh, for Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And it was empty that day, wasn't it? So we went and sat in there and we got set up, got the microphones in there and we just sat around the microphone. And it's funny, when you listen back, um, we sounded really nervous. And we were nervous. We, we yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's funny because we sat there and, you know, again, it was totally, totally out of our comfort zone. Yes, we're used to standing up and speaking to a lot of people in the martial arts fraternity in your class. But actually sitting there, sitting around the microphone talking about yourself was quite, um, it was quite Haunting. daunting. It, it, was, it was very it was daunting, wasn't it? And, and, I, and I, I always recall, you know, the certainly in, in the early days. We, I mean, we were, again, who wants to listen to us? Well, actually, we know some great martial artists in the world. 
you know, personally and through association of, of, of other friends. That, you know, without a doubt, we leverage on, on, this, uh, on this podcast. And now they've become good friends of ours as well. So, you know, having, having that access, well, straight away, there are people that wanted to listen to that. Because without a doubt, I think we'd planned originally to do mainly us talking about different subjects. And on the early stages, you know, to get it kicked off, we wanted to bring someone on exciting, someone that people wanted to listen to a bit of a backstory. So it wasn't actually, we didn't start thinking, oh, we're going to just provide podcast interviews with great martial artists. We were going to talk about the industry, the pros and cons, what some of the challenges are, um, how we could help instructors, how we could help fighters, and, and all those other bits and bobs. But, it, you know, it very, became very apparent very, very quickly. That's a great approach, and we can throw a little bit of that in, but actually, wouldn't it be better if we could do that with some guests? But do you, but do you not think, though, that that's been the whole journey this year, is that we started off doing one thing, and it's gone on off in t- a totally different tangent, hasn't it? So yeah, many things with, without set, a doubt. <coughs> so many things that we've set out, like we set the podcast, we said, well, we'll just talk about subject matter, and it just happened that people, you know, they wanted to listen to the interviews, and they love the interviews. Well, the interviews are the subject matter, but we're getting, a, I, for me, it's getting a third party's opinion into it as well. And yeah. depending on who that third party is, we'll give you a, a different perspective and a different view. So I think it, it, it didn't evolve how we wanted it, but the, I think the key thing we did and, uh, you know, we, we, we set ourselves a date, didn't we? When are we going to do our first one? And we made sure we hit it. And we didn't know how to publish it. We didn't know how to record it. We didn't know what equipment. Um, <clears throat> but we, put, we set that date in the calendar. I remember ringing it on my, uh, on my iPhone, uh, first podcast date. And we knew we had a launch date. And then we just set about making it happen. Was it perfect? Was it? By is no it, means was it perfect. Is it still perfect? No way. You no, know, no. We're still, like, we're, still, we're, still, we're still not experts, but I think we've definitely come a long way from, from last year in terms, yeah. of, in terms of what we're, what we're delivering, the content that we're delivering, how we've come across, uh, maybe our attitude to it. And, and it's just basically evolved with us, haven't we? And, we can, and I remember the, going back to the first one, because what, what, what we used to do, we used to sort of sit down for a whole day, didn't we, and record like seven or eight podcasts in one yeah, day. Right, right, the only reason we don't do that now is because we're in COVID and everyone's available and there's a little bit more time. This so I think well, once we get back, well, will we get back to a normal? Who knows? That's the question on everyone's lips. Six million dollar question. But I think when, when we get back to that stage, we'll go back to those booking that one day out a month and we'll get those eight interviews in. But I remember booking those, that, those first, I think, we did we do about six on the first day, six or eight? Yeah, so we did, uh, we did your dad, didn't we? Obviously, he was, a, he was a, you know, primed for it, really. Cause it was, oh, he loved it, yeah. Yeah, he loved it. So we had your dad on and we had, we had, we had Dave Oliver on the first day. I can't remember who we had on the first day now. Yeah, that's bad, isn't it? Bad. Bob Sykes, we had Bob lined Sykes. up. I remember we had Bob oh, we had, Sykes. We had Sarah Scott. Sarah Scott was Sarah up. Sarah Scott, up. yeah. Physio, Gordon Fern. Gordon Fern, yeah. Yeah. One voice. So, we, you know, some of our, our local connections and some people just outside of our network, but in, in, in the local peri- uh, peripheral. And uh, I, I always remember, you know, for me, you know, I'm a business development and salesperson. So I'm up and down the country. So I drove up to York. We did the whole day. And it was to me, it was just like doing, you know, six or seven meetings. No real problem. But for you, I think you remember you had a bit of an issue, didn't you? I, I found it really difficult, really, really difficult. I found doing the podcasting difficult. I found uh, listening back to myself difficult. You know, when you, when you first listen back and it's like, oh my gosh, really? We're going to release that? I, no, I sound like a right dipstick. <laughs> and we all know that I do sound like a dipstick. But um, No, it's in the public domain. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but, we, but I, we came off that first, that first day or you, so. You were knackered, weren't you? It was absolutely, absolutely exhausting. And I felt like I was um, hungover and jet lagged all at the same time for a couple yeah. of days. And I couldn't really understand why. And I think because when you're doing an interview, it's not just a case of us talking. I mean, at the moment it's easy because we could we could just chat. Well, we're, like, not, we're like, in the zone now, aren't we? It's like like, we, like we do every, exactly like we do every day. But when you're chatting to a guest, it's not just a case of having a list of questions and, and asking those questions, which is what we did as well in the first. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 uh, we had a list detail. of standard, standard questions we were going to yeah. ask, didn't we? <laughs> where now you know. And, and if, if we varied off, it was like, oh my gosh, we need to get back on the track. But you've got to listen intently to the guest. You've got to really listen, to the, listen, listen intently. You've got to understand what their answers are. And then you've got to start building your next question around what they're right and, 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 man, and manipulating the, the conversation to get it to where you want to go. So you're the, we're steering it, really. Yeah. And I think for me, um, you know, when I'm going out and I'm talking to our, our customers and when I'm doing my consultancy sales, 
that's what I do. That's what I've been doing that for years. So it was second nature. So it was actually for me, it was quite an easy transition. Apart from having to listen back to my own voice, which at the start I absolutely hated. It's difficult. I mean, I think, I think, I think the pinnacle, the turning point for me was, I, and you'll, you'll, you'll know this because in the first couple of, you know, I, I, I tend to have lots of ums and ums, which I do. You, which the, I, you I nicknamed Gavin the um man. Which, so which I, um, early, I used to spend at least a good hour editing Gavin's ums out. Um, <laughs> um, um. Yeah, um, but, um. <laughs> but, but I've since been told that having ums and ums is a sign of being intelligent, Jackie. Did you know that? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He told you that, your mum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the, I think the pinnacle, you know, like I say, in the, in the early days, I was like, Jackson, take that out. That, that sounds crap. Take that out. You can't have that in. And now it gets to a point where you don't even think about it. But we were interviewing uh, Neil Adams, weren't we? Neil Adams. Yes. Yeah, Neil Adams. And we sat in a hotel room and we had all the speakers set up and was interviewing and while I was interviewing him, I was eating pizza and drinking, drinking a beer from what I remember. That's right, yeah, yeah, we did have a beer, yeah. Yeah, but then you think back, you think, gosh, I can't believe we would never have done that at the, at the very start, that's for no, sure. No, 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 exactly, exactly. And it's just become, it's almost become um, second well, nature to do that. Second them, nature and, and natural know. now, I think, yeah. You know, much, yeah much so. easier. Now, even, even just sitting here talking to us, each other. In fact, yeah. it's probably easier just talking to me and you, isn't it? Because it's, it's easier to communicate. <laughs> it is, yeah. We know each other so well. Exactly. So, okay. So, right, then, Jackie. So, let's go. So, right, right at the beginning, then. So, we started off doing the podcast. Obviously, we had um, we were quite nervous about it. Obviously, we had some we had some great guests on. So, let's just talk through maybe some of the high points, maybe of those early days. So, I suppose it's it's, it's we're just talking about this early on. It's quite difficult when you're casting casting back over to you know all those episodes. I know. Yeah. yeah. So many high I, points. I think one one thing we've got to put out there: if we don't mention one of our guests. Yeah, it's not because we don't think you're absolutely fantastic. It's because actually we've done 50 and that journey, it's been over a year. So it's, uh, you know, hopefully we won't insult anybody by not remembering you and, and, and naming you right now. So we're going to talk some of the highlights. I, th- I think the best one for me, and it's a personal thing. And the, and, and I think the, it's, it was getting to talk to all of those martial artists that I grew up with as a kid. You know, from the age of four, talking to them, you know, I, I knew them, but I knew I knew them from a relationship of a kid to an adult. Because most of them, you know, and I'll just run through some names: uh, my dad, Bob Sykes, Dave Oliver, Kenny Walton, um, people, Ray Gale. People you knew from the squad days as well. Pete, well, yeah, but, but just general martial artists that I'd, I'd bumped into and, and chatted. They only had a relationship with me as a as a, as a little kid. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Kevin Brewton, another one. Um, Oh God! Who else? Like I say, so, so many to mention. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Minnick, yeah, yeah. So, and all these people—they they knew me as a child, but actually, you know, although I know many of them now, some of them I'd lost touch with. It was it was great getting to talk to them on a on a on an, as an adult to an adult, you know, and then really digging into their backstories to you know some of the things that they were telling me. I, I didn't know that about them. You know, I thought in my mind they were they were they were heroes anyway. And people that I looked look up to or looked up to and still do. But actually to have that adult to adult conversation with them and really find out some of the detail of their backstory, to me that, that blew me away. I mean, I mean I, I, the best example probably is my dad. Yeah, I, I've I know I've known him all my life, obviously. But I've known him <laughs> as my as my dad, I've known him as my instructor. Uh, we, we're good friends still. But actually to hear him come out with some of the his opinions and stories. Yeah, I knew his opinions, but actually probably more of his, more of his stories and his own self-belief and all those things. Actually, I th- I, to me, that was, that was quite endearing. I, I really, really enjoyed that, listen, listening to that. And that led on to, again, you know, some of, the, some of the other old school martial artists out there that, again, I knew as from there having a relationship as a kid, but really finding that, the, the, those stories and, and, and getting to know their personalities a little bit better. And I think that's something... That I've really, really enjoyed doing. Getting those personalities of, uh, or the big personalities in the martial arts world, sitting down, laying things bare, and allowing our, our listeners to be able to hear, hear those stories and, and let those personalities come through. And it's been, it's been amazing because if you, if you, I mean, I'm a big data person. You know, I love data. If you, if you, anyone that knows me. You know, I don't make snap decisions. I follow the data. You know, if you can measure it, you can then you can make some informed decisions with it. You can it. manage it, right? That's that's right. And if you, if we if we had a timeline of each of those those big personalities within the martial arts world, 
it tracks pretty much the same way. There's nobody that started off, you know, being absolutely awesome. You know, there's one or two uh, exceptions, but actually their journey started probably a little bit early. I mean, a good example of that, Alfie Lewis, exceptional fighter, without a doubt. Um, he got into martial arts uh, post his boxing career. So he was already in that mindset of a fighter. You know, so when he transitioned as a kid from uh, karate, boxing, then into freestyle, you know, he had a lot of those skills. Others that just jump in at the age of 20, yeah, they don't just start off awesome. And even, even Alfie was saying, as, as a youngster, he wasn't awesome. You know, he used to get his ass kicked in the boxing ring. Yeah, and it yep. was hard work, and he'd have to go out running, and people would drag him around his coat. They didn't just turn up and bing, that, that this finished product. You know, everyone has worked through that. Through they've their, all had their to be moulded, haven't they? They've all had to yeah. be moulded through they the media. moulded themselves. Through, yeah, through but they had a vision yeah. of what they wanted to be. Exactly. And uh, the, 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 commons, the common thing that really sticks in my mind, who is really the, the, the biggest influencer in, and certainly over the 50 guests that we, um, that we interviewed, how many, um, how many of our guests said, oh, I started martial arts after I saw Bruce Lee. Yeah, Enter the Dragon. Yeah, Enter, Enter the, the Dragon, the film of, of a generation. <laughs> oh, Bruce Lee's got some uh, answering to do, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, he, yeah, he was responsible. Yeah, and he, but it, did he realize at the time? Probably not, you know, how influential in martial arts he, he would be um, to some of the greatest martial artists that we have living today. Yeah, and, what, and, what, the, and the, fun say, sorry, go, sorry, go sorry, the funny thing is as well, there's a lot of people, uh, or a lot of the guests that we interviewed, it all started out by accident, didn't it? Like you think about our mm -hmm. generation now, we, you know, you might think, right, you've got YouTube and the kids have got YouTube and they've got all these, these different media formats they can look back and say, right, I'm going to... Um, I really want to start Kung Fu because it looks cool. Or I want to start Taekwondo because of the high kicks and the jumping kicks. Or I want to start Jiu Jitsu because that's what, that's what they do in MMA. Or I want to start or, 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 or whatever. But exactly. Yeah. But for us, it was just you went wherever the nearest place was to you. So if you. And a lot of those, a lot of those uh, big personalities in martial arts today, they didn't you know, specifically roll into a Laogar club or a Taekwondo club or a, or a karate club or a kickboxing club. They went to the first place their parents took them. Yeah. Well, that's, that's certainly how it was for me and for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like didn't have say, a choice, No, you don't, you don't have no choice, mate. No choice. <laughs> but but you, then but, I, think, and the, I think another key theme that a lot of our guests talked about was the, how those martial arts instructors actually weren't just martial arts instructors. They were life mentors and inspirations. Yeah, without, without them even needing... Realising that, like these days, you know, we've all got titles, we've all got like life coach, or I'm a trained life coach, or I'm a trained mentor, or I've been to, you know, where they didn't, these instructors, they didn't realise that they were mentoring. Um, there wasn't such a thing then, was there really? No, you, you just, they were, they were just teaching the sport that they loved the way that yeah. they knew best, but yeah. they probably didn't realise the influence that they had on many generations. Mm. You no, know, going yeah, forward. Definitely. And you know, one of the other interesting things, certainly for me, is 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 the the crossover between the martial arts world and the and the business world, and how those skills and, and life that, and, and, life, and, li life. and life, yeah, exactly, and how those skills that you've learned as a martial artist have been really transferable into into the lives that you know the, the business life and the work life balance that a lot of these um these these sort of martial artists have, have gained. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been it's been certainly been a cool journey, and like you say, we've had so many <coughs> good guests on. When you think back, you just can't really picture anything that really sticks out. Some of the jokes were great. Some of the laughter we've had on there. Have been oh god, yeah. Some, yeah. Of, some of the people like that you certainly wouldn't expect to come out of some corkers have come out of some real good lines. Yeah, I think um, we're gonna have to do a uh, not so much a best bits, but a the edited bits. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we've got plenty of those, haven't we? Yeah, we've got plenty of them. I mean, we're so, always quite keen to make sure that the uh, the podcast is accessible to anyone. So if anyone swears or they, they, they come out with a, a view, which isn't these days quite PC, we always make sure we, 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 we hide, well, not hide it, we cut it out because we want to make sure it's accessible to everyone and certainly make sure that all our guests are, and, they, and to be fair, they all are uh, seen in, in, in the best light. So what would, what, what would what, you say your highlights were? Well, I was just, okay, my, I have one highlight, I think, one real um, sort of highlighting moment, and that was when we was uh, sat in America, overlooking Tampa Bay, sat there with a beer, in our shorts. Um, Talking in, to Chris Evans. No, no, no. 
That's a good blue flag. That was in the hotel. <laughs> well, yeah, true, true. <laughs> no, but you're right. But but sat there, um, you know, we we sat there and was overlooking Tampa Bay and was chatting to Melody Melody Johnson as she is now. You know, once uh, Melody Schumann, one of the most influential martial artists over the last twenty years, certainly in when it comes to business and child development and stuff like that. Um, and we sat there and it was just that pinch yourself moment that did, was it the podcast that really got us here and I think it was really because was, yeah. you know without the podcast um, it sort of led us on to so many other things and got us thinking about you know where do we want to go next we've started the podcast and, and as we were saying earlier on because of a lot of the people that we've interviewed there was a common theme and a lot of the martial artists certainly the school owners they have <laughs> the same problems that we were facing within our our schools, weren't they? Yeah, you know, when you definitely. think about think about the problems with um, retention, or you think about the problems with marketing, or you think about um, problems in business and how to grow your schools and things like that, they're the same problems that not just we were facing as as martial arts school owners, but everybody faces and everyone has to go through. Even the most successful as martial artists have all had to go through that same those same problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I think now, now with the now with the with the podcast, what do, what do you what do you think some of the uh, the the challenges have been in, in in your mind? I know you mentioned you know not wanting to hear your voice, but what do you think some of the challenges? Oh, the actual the actual you, podcast itself. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> we're still um, on that subject, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we've not not moved on to the other ones yet. No, no. <laughs> never never one for keeping uh, keeping the rules, Jackson. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I mean, I th- I think. Um, Obviously, us trying to get together all the time. Obviously, I know since since COVID, COVID has hit. Um, obviously, we're using the medium of Zoom and um, video conferencing and things a lot more. So, mm-hmm. this will probably continue. I would thought, yeah. I think for a lot of us, yeah, it's going to be great when we do get together and we meet up and we can get around the microphone and get guests in. Um, but obviously, you being 180 odd miles away, it's made it easy, hasn't it? And I think the yeah. with, with with COVID, it's been great because everyone's been at home. So it's been dead easy to get hold of people. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, in terms of challenges, I don't know, Lee Jackson. I don't know. It's Tell been me. that easy. Is there, have you, has there ever been a time where your motivation, because that's what we are, motivating martial artists, motivating others, listening to motivation, has your motivation ever waned? Not, not on the podcast, no. No? Not on the not on the podcast. Um, if I'm honest, so you know, you know, each time we get, you know, sometimes it's me that comes to you and you say, Jackson, we've got so and so lined up. I think the actual podcast is I've loved it, and I think you know, growing each day, um, our confidence is growing with it. Um, our experience is certainly it's certainly been growing with it over time. Um, but to, no, not really. Not in terms of not in terms of uh, motivation. I think the motivation's always been there. And I think the next, it's, it's always looking for the next step, isn't it? Just to put yourself out. I mean, out certainly, certainly for, for mine, one of, one of the challenges in the early days. So for guests that, that don't know or listeners that don't know, when we first kicked it off, you know, we didn't have a, a penny to rub together to support it, to put into the, the Motivated Martial Artist Fund. So we used to, uh, well, we used to edit it out. I, well, I used to edit it, didn't I? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes on a Sunday evening, I, I would sit there for two or three hours getting Gavin's ums out. <laughs> it's like a, a, a good four or five hours four or five hours yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah that's why we always used to record probably about an hour and a half worth of footage and i'd take 45 minutes of ums <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i mean you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, we, yeah for those that don't know you, you could probably listen back to some of the early episodes so we, we talked <laughs> about talked about how we can improve our presentation skills yeah and the first one was like, okay we've got to cut these ums out gav we've got to get these on not just gavin myself as well and you find that you know when you're you're thinking on the on your feet and you and you're, you're concentrating and you're thinking what question next and the guest is talking. Um, right there we go. I've just thought of something to say next. So we cut the ums out, and that, we, I think we did that quite successfully. But Gavin replaced it with you know what I mean. <laughs> what was it? You know what I mean, or something else, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's something. I think it, I think is again. It's it comes down to that speaking thing. We talked about going to. Um, I forget the name of the, there's like a coaching. Coaching, yeah, yeah. I remember you saying, when you were saying to me, when you were in the army, you had the thing, you had, you went through like some courses or like some, some like presentation public, courses. Presentation yeah, courses. Different. And every time you said, um, you had to put a pound in the, a pound in the bucket and you being the tight ass that, that you are, that would have definitely <laughs> stuck. <laughs> Mate, I dropped them straight away. Dropped them straight away. I think it probably ended up with about 50p. 
over the duration yeah. of the second but, half. But of I think joke of the side, it's it's these it's things. Training, that, isn't it? And familiarisation. That's, it that's is. what it is. But this, on the same time, it's these little these little things that put people off doing things, mm. and it hasn't stopped us. You know, by you know by you know we're 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 definitely not professional interviewers by no means but it hasn't stopped us doing it and it hasn't stopped us forging that path and doing going down that journey do you know what i, I we, we talked about this and as we mentioned earlier that we used to write the questions down we used to research the guests and we would spend up maybe a good hour and a half doing that and that was time consuming yeah so when, when we talk about doing a podcast episode so first of all we got to book the guests yeah so that can take some time, and particularly when we were doing it for one day, that was almost half a day's work, wasn't yeah, it? And don't forget, though, in the early days, getting guests wasn't that easy because no one no. knew us, no one had yeah. heard the podcast. So we were finding we were we were asking people, and they wasn't really coming back to us. Where you know, I have to say, you know, we ask people now, and we've got I've got I me, mean, I'm just looking at I've got a list now. as long as as long as I've, uh, got, I've got a list, I've got a whole page list here of people that want to come on that we've just not had time to even fit them in. It's, yeah. it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. So, but don't worry, we'll get to everybody. We yeah. will get to everybody. Uh, no, but I think I think one of the it. things that you were going to go down, you was talking. I guess you was talking about when you edit used to after after. Yeah, so yeah, when we used edit to, on edit, a Sunday night. Edit on a Sunday night. That became very very tiresome. Yeah. Uh, the time booking guests that was that was hard work. Um, doing the artwork, getting it onto the platform, getting it onto YouTube. We used to spend a lot of time doing that, and that was becoming really exhausting. A couple of things happened, and you know, one of our uh, one of our mentors, uh, Phil Scaife, said, "Well, why, why are you doing all this yourself?" Because like, well, it's our podcast. Well, actually, we just in, ended up basically um, subbing this out to somebody else to do. And now, the majority of the work that we do is <clears throat> talking to the guests, and that's what we do. But I remember we started to improve as the podcast became more popular. It was easier to book people, so that became less time consuming. Yeah. Um, as we improved our uh, the ability to speak into the mic and dropping the ums and arms and all those other bits, now we don't even edit the podcast unless yeah. there's things that we think we feel that we need to take out. So that then became less time consuming. Um, getting someone else to do the artwork and doing the uploads, you know. So we we, we moved ourselves from the business, and that's what our, our mentor basically said to us. You know, you should be leveraging other other people that are, have better skill sets at doing that. Than rather than doing it yourself. But, that, but that's but, difficult, isn't it? That's difficult. It is, yeah. as a, as it's our a, baby. Well, yeah, we know how is. to do it best. Well, and, I, and, I think, and I think that's, that, and that's, that's one of the biggest problems with the, in, the instructors and business people have is because you create this baby, you start this thing from scratch, and you don't want to let go. You don't want to give these tasks to people because you always think, no, I can do it better. But actually, there's always people out there that could do your job better, especially these um, menial tasks, like, like things like video editing, okay, or sound editing or whatever we're not experts in that but we know people that are really really good at that now we've now trained them up to be almost That's right, yeah. it, haven't they mm -hmm. and, and it didn't it didn't take that much time but it took a bit of time to to find them it took, it took time, time i to think train to get them. our head around doing that yeah it did yeah, yeah. And, and i think that was the biggest challenge one of the biggest challenges we had so you know my, my enthusiasm to do the podcast never wavered my enthusiasm to do, uh, do all the other me i say menial tasks they're not menial tasks because they're important all the other tedious tasks yeah, yeah, yeah as well as doing the podcast that started to wane at one stage uh, and, and very very quickly we rectified it i said we outsourced it yeah so now yeah. when i when our guests come on they say it to us oh when when, when am i going to be on <sighs> god knows because we just take the podcast and we hand it over to our, our team our media team and, and off they go on their own and do it so we never really know when things are going to be scheduled. So it's a bit of a bit of a Christmas surprise for us as well. Sometimes, where maybe six weeks after we're like, ah, oh, I remember doing that podcast. So I want to listen to it myself just to see what it sounds like and refresh myself on how good it actually was. But but you think about all the things that we've done now, all the all the different journeys that are now. We're going to talk about this in in part two of this podcast shortly. Well, let's, let's go into it now. We're, we're rolling. Let's go, let's go straight into it. Okay. Okay. So first thing that happened then. So let's so on started the podcast. As we started to get into the podcast, started to speak to these business owners, martial arts instructors, we realized that we all had the same problem. We all had the same problem with marketing. We all had the same problem with retention. We all had the same problem with recruiting, retention. recruiting, not having, not having enough staff. Exactly what you talked about then, handing I mean, stuff over. You yeah, know, well, that, that was the, one of the biggest ones that, that sprung in my mind because you know, most successful martial art owners, they're the teacher in front of that class or the instructor and they're there, they've got big clubs, but the big clubs rely on big them. They have to be there all the time doing that role. And it's very, very difficult, uh, certainly in a lot of the instructor's mind, to hand that to somebody else to do. 
But yeah. at the same time, when they fall ill or they're in an accident or something happens, we, we heard from a number of instructors that, that the challenge that they've had to continue that six day a week business, yeah. uh, three hours a night. So that's, yeah, that's oh, been oh. a real life. So, so, certainly when you look at some of the older instructors, some of the older instructors that have been at it for 30, 40 years, and unfortunately, they, you know, a lot of, like I say, a lot of them haven't got very good pensions. Um, and a lot of them find that they're still on that roller coaster ride of you get a student, you lose a student. You get a, you get a student. You get a student, you lose two. Yeah, exactly. You get and, two students, you lose one. And, and, they, and they can't keep up with the, with the media side. Now, obviously, with the internet and things like that, a lot of the older, stu- the older instructors that we've met um, through doing the podcast, whether, whether we've interviewed them on the podcast or we've, you know, we've interviewed them outside of the podcast, which we have doing, done quite a lot of interviews outside of, outside of, the, podcast outside of right. the podcast, just to understand um, some of the biggest problems that instructors go through as we build our um, part of our of a, of a branch of the company. You know, we realize that uh, you know, with the advent of the internet, a lot of these older, older instructors... Yeah. Um, for, for example, gone, gone are the days of you know, where you could throw out 100 flyers or a thousand flyers and you'd get loads of inquiries or you'd do a great big demo and people would come because the certainly the the leisure industry and let's face it martial arts is classes that as a leisure industry there are so many more options out there you know you've got your football your rugby your tennis your core gymnastics your core sports british sports on top of that then you've got your um <coughs> your um, netball clubs your basketball clubs, all these other sports, your dancing schools, your gymnastic schools, your swimming clubs, okay? And that, they really, what I see as the competitors, because yeah, let's yeah. face it, no one actually runs into my school and I want to learn Taekwondo. I've seen all the martial arts, I've researched them all, and Taekwondo's got the best kicks and it does No, they see a martial arts class, it's, you know, regardless of what it is. Uh, I think maybe the only differentiator to that is whether it's a, a stand-up class or a groundwork class, jujitsu, and in fact, probably not. Here's a good example. So my sister, she lives in the, in the Manchester area. Uh, she looked for a taekwondo class because that's what the family did. Uh, they couldn't find one. The, the nearest class was a jujitsu class, so they, yeah. they took my. So they went along. That. Yeah, she didn't know the difference between jujitsu and taekwondo, no. and she's been in a taekwondo family all her life. And quite, fr- quite frankly, Jackie, she probably didn't care. No, she, she wanted her son to do an activity, which is which is perfectly right, great to do, and. You know, whether it's jiu-jitsu, kung fu, karate, it doesn't really matter. But what, what, my, my point is, someone that's been exposed to these, those different martial arts all their life didn't know the difference between a taekwondo class yeah, and a jiu-jitsu class. So that's where really the stand-up and the, and, and the groundwork type stuff. So, so the, so the biggest competitor question. to us is not martial arts schools. It's all those other leisure activities that children do. And let's face it, they are rammed with leisure activities, most kids these days. So, so let's, let's um, put yourself in the position of a martial arts instructor then. So how do you get that exposure? How do you get that exposure? By be- better marketing, right? Better marketing. Well, without a doubt, yeah. Visibility, mar- you've got to be seen. Yeah, exactly. And if you're not seen, um, <coughs> obscurity, obscurity is the instructor's worst, worst problem. Yeah. And I think if people don't know, you, know who you are, they're never going to come along. And if you're well, one not of these, you, they don't know what services you offer. No, but how many times have you? How many times have you heard this though, Jackie? And we talk about marketing, and we talk to these instructors, and they say, "Oh, yeah, I don't advertise like it's a like it's a really good thing." Oh, I don't advertise. Word of mouth. I only use word of mouth. People come to yeah. me because they love my school. And don't get me wrong, that's brilliant. You obviously do a good job if people come to your school. Well, you're going to hit a ceiling with that, without a doubt. You're going to get to a point where you've got to have exposure. You've got to have yeah. exposure, and sticking out flyers these days. As you said, you know, and, and them days, and they do work. T- targeted flyers do work. Mm-hmm. Um, untargeted flyers are just a waste of time. As well, throw your money away. Yeah, exactly. But targeted flyers and stuff like that do work. But, but definitely, um, the the digital side, social media is is now the way forward. And understanding how to do that and um, how to advertise through. I mean, we we've been um, advertising through Facebook ads for a number of years now. Facebook ads, Google ads, Google ads, gen- general, a general um, internet presence. So um, across all the different apps, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, blah, 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 all, all those Twitter even, yeah. but you, you don't have that digital presence. It certainly reduces your ability to be seen in the digital space. And let's face it. And uh, when we talk, so, um, and certainly in my other role, having that, that exposure, um, and that digital presence 
in all organization and there's no reason the leisure industry and in particular the martial arts industry is any different yeah you know it's just probably the lag that it's taken for that industry to get that digital presence or understand the need to have that digital presence and there's a number of factors for that so i won't go into that we probably don't have time to sit and talk about it for hours yeah okay all right jackie just stop me there so just going back then because we've diverted off our journey a little bit we'll get to that so obviously we did the podcast um i approached you didn't i and i said jackson I've got um, one of the programs that I'm using in my schools is called Skills. Um, yep. I, I called it Ninja Skills. Um, other, other people call it different skills, but the, but the concept, you know, the, the company is Skills, and the concept is around bringing a child development stroke martial arts program into the 21st century, basically. There were, we, well, yeah. yeah, there were too many, too many instructors. And I, I used to be one of them. Me, me included. You, yeah, exactly. You, and some of the old where it was always, always about, look, this is the art that I learned. This is what I'm going to teach. And, and I'm going to teach it. I'm going to break it down and I'm going to teach it nicely. And yeah. I'm going to be friendly and I'm going to do it with a smile and I'm going to make the kids laugh. So it's basically a watered down version of the martial art that they learned 20 or 30 years ago. Because the instructors realized, certainly the full-time instructors realized that they needed to have a, a, they needed to have children in their class if they wanted to make a living from it. So mm -hmm. what a lot of instructors did, they realized that. So they started advertising for children. Um, then what they did, they brought the children into the class. Then they started to water down their curriculum or change their syllabus to fit with what they thought that child child needed. Well, well fit it around to, how, to teach them how they learn, basically. Exactly. And that's just slowing it down. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. No, no, it, it works. But, you know, it, it was, again, it was one of those moments when we, um, obviously, when we was over in the States and, we, and was having that conversation with Melody, who was who obviously developed the skills, the skills program. And it was, they was just talking about the reverse concept. So basically, what skills do they do it the opposite way around? They don't, ha they don't take a martial art and try to teach it to a child. Okay, they look at the age of the, the age of development and they teach them what's specific to that age of development. And there's a lot of science that goes into it. There's a lot, a lot of psychology. Of psychology that goes into it. Um, understanding the brain, understanding the, 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 the development of that child at that age. And they teach the syllabus that is right. So the thing is, thing, the way by, I mean, it took, took me a while to get my head around it. And I was very much like, well, no, the way I do it is the way I, taught, I was taught. I'm always going to do it that way. But then you realize <coughs> um, I, that there's, there's quite... You, you're, you're basically on a roller coaster. You're basically on a roller coaster ride because you get these kids or you get these students, you teach them the syllabus, and then once it starts to get difficult, and a lot of instructors will, will understand this, once you start to get, if it becomes too difficult or it becomes too easy, then you lose students. So you've got your three and four year olds, okay, or your five and six year olds even, and once they get to that middle of the row, we, we call it a green belt in Taekwondo. Once they get to that sort of green belt level, middle of the row, the four and five-year-olds start to find it too hard, so they drop out. But then on the opposite end of the scale, you've got sort of the nine, 10, or 11, or 14-year-olds that find it too easy because you're having to teach the younger children at the same time. So you have to slow the class down. So those 13, 14, 15-year-olds find it too easy, so they drop out. So you're forever on this roller coaster ride. So the, the, the idea with skills, it's all age specific. So it's making sure that you break in all of your classes into three and four year olds, five and six year olds, seven to nine year olds. And then there's basically programs that go all the way through, isn't it, Jackie? Yeah. And I think the, from, you know, certainly where we, we spoke to a lot of instructors, how do we fit that in? How do we integrate it into our syllabus? It won't work. Well, actually, it does because if you look at all the major major sports now uh, football rugby they teach the core skills the passing the sidestepping and as they get to a particular age then they introduce the things like tackling and as they get older their their bodies and they're mentally more uh, mature and physically more mature they teach scrummaging and i just use rugby as a basic i know that's what i that's what i know about having being a rugby coach and played rugby for a, while, a long time so certainly when I was a youngster, everyone used to play rugby. You didn't learn about the core skills. And really, that's, that's what this, uh, this program in, introduces. So that, that's been an interesting step, hasn't it, for us? Really, well, 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 really that developing was, that knowledge. Well, that was the first step, I think, to, to build our, our consultancy brand. Obviously, so we have a consultancy brand now. 
Um, and I think that was the first stage. The first step was the podcast, obviously, which, you know. I, think, I don't think it was. The first stage was the digitization stage. Okay. Yeah. So what, one of the things that Gavin and I have done throughout our, our martial arts schools, and certainly I do that, for, I do, I've, I've been doing it as a career, is understanding processes within an organization, whether it's a sales process, a manufacturing process, a design process, and then particularly in organizations, looking at how you can digitize that and what the benefits are. Yeah. So, for example, you hit your magic button and you've signed someone up, they've paid for their license and they're scheduled into the next class and they get an automated email to do that. In, in a lot of martial arts clubs, that's a, they phone you, you phone them, they sign a piece, they come to the club, they sign a piece of paper and then they go away, set up a direct debit and it can take time. And for martial arts instructors, full-time, or even, even part-time instructors, it's a huge administration burden. <coughs> so one it takes the fun out. It takes the fun out of what you're doing. If you've not yeah. got it right, and it's again, it's when we speak to instructors, it's ah, oh, the admin side of it is a killer. But these yeah. days, the admin admin stuff could just go at a flash. It it's can be it can be a click of a button. Yeah. There's so when we when we talk about digitizing those processes, one understanding how your business runs, and every martial arts school is different. There are some uh, similarities, but everyone is different. Uh, whether it's your license, how you sign them up, how they have by their uniforms, yada, all those things. But they can all be understood and mapped. So you put it on a piece of paper and map it, and then you can digitize it. So one, your your administration time in, in your business, you're, you, know, you, you gain hours and hours and hours back, and that, that's important. Secondly, your students get a better student experience. You know, we have this discussion all the time. You know, I can't remember the last time, that's probably, some people do, I'm sure, some old school, go into a travel agents and then they sit down and they book the holiday. To be honest, I haven't done that for years. My partner gets online, she looks for the best deal, hits go, boom, boom, and it's paid for. Yeah, and, we, and we've got, a, we've got a, a holiday booked. You know, no longer do we track there, look through all the brochures. I haven't seen a holiday brochure for years. Have you seen a brochure for years? And that, that's just one example of, of, of what people expect from from this era this the the 4.0 industry of digitization you know they're looking up they're looking on their phones so you know people a lot of people we see with websites they're not optimized for phones people look at it and it, it was it, it, it's 80 percent, isn't it i think 80 percent of, of, yeah, of, of all internet views are on the phone now yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. and probably only i would say about 40 percent of internet sites are optimized for for phones uh, your platform may be optimized but actually is your is your visual flow, is your sales funnel, say sales funnel, is your customer journey, your student journey on that website optimized for that? I would probably suggest, you know, certainly having looked at a lot of the websites, it's not. And that's really down to, you know, not knowing. It's not a, a slur or a knock on any instructors out there. It's, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, and, the, and the digital world has changed so much. And, you know, certainly through COVID, it's been accelerated. Yeah, no. Yeah, sure. and, you know, so we really have to uh, you know, engage with martial arts instructors, and we feel that we're we're best place to do that, having done that professionally for a number of years, and also professionally in our own professional martial arts school. So that's that's a service that, that we we've looked to offer. But and, uh, and to be quite it's, honest, it's, it's funny though, isn't it? Because you do great it, take up on it. But you think about you think about like we did it in our own schools, but we didn't even really think about it, did we? You know, mm. I think I suppose I suppose because there's two of us though, you know. You know, working the way we do, like say my wife, you know, she moans at me because I speak to you more than I do her. But we're always, um, always on the phone, batting around ideas to each ideas, other, aren't we? Yeah. And, and I think and, a lot of instructors don't have that. That's always a challenge, and that that comes back to the mentoring piece. So you know, we talked about the the importance of having a mentor. Yeah. You know, someone to bounce ideas. A lot of uh, a lot of martial arts instructors do things in isolation, and yeah. to be fair, I think that's that's quite hard. Yeah. But. You know, but, but but there's certainly holes in our game, wasn't there? There was there was a no, lot of holes no, in our game. Doubt. I mean, we obviously we used to chat about stuff, and we used to say, "Well, what, you know, what are we going to do about this?" Well, we don't know. And we said, "Right, okay, well, let's find someone that does." So, not, yeah. We, yeah, we we made sure that we sort of surrounded. You know, when you look at our our network of friends now, you know, there's probably four, five, six, seven of us probably within within a, within a group that we have like WhatsApp groups together, and all of us are on the same journey. We're all all into our. Um, self development. We all we all run businesses. So, some of us run six figure six, six figure six businesses. businesses yeah. No, there's some that are touching on seven figures now. So they've gone to the next step. So they know some of the problems you're going to face, etc. So, it's, so, so you know, why make those same mistakes? Why face those um, challenges in isolation? 
Yeah. You know, people are... In, in, at first, I think it's hard to do, isn't it? Reach out to people. It is, because... Yeah, trust, you, you don't know who you're talking... Uh, you, you know, you find people that you... You trust. Um, you trust. Yeah. And that, that can always be challenging. You find people that are professional. And then you, you talk to those, those programs. I mean, one, one of the sayings that me, me and Gavin have, if we're the cleverest person in the room... You're in the wrong room. We're in the wrong room and we're doing ourselves a disservice. Yeah. We want to be the stupidest people in that room so yeah. we can learn yeah, and enrich our, uh, our, our knowledge. Uh, but that, 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 again, do you not think, though, that's a mindset, though, isn't it? I think that's a mindset. I, if, if I, again, if I'm in a room and I know that I, you know, that all the people in there are more successful, you know, some of the network events that we go to, sure, yeah. quite often we're, we're in this position where we're in a room and there are people surrounded and a lot of them have got big, big businesses and they're telling us about this and we're looking at each other thinking, Jesus, you know, these guys are way ahead of where we are. They yeah. are. They Same are. Time, they're two years ahead or three years ahead. Yeah. But, but it's, they it's started on that journey just where we are. Yeah. But you come out with loads of nuggets, don't you? And you think, yeah. right, that's the first right, thing. That's a, good, that's a good idea. We need that's to change that. We need to look at this. Or oh, actually, it's even, even, even more rewarding when someone says to you, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, I like the way you're doing that. And you think, wow, ah, right, confirmation. I'm on the right path. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so, and I think uh, not just martial arts instructors, a lot of people struggle to get their head around that concept of, of reaching out to a mentor. And, um, you know, for me, it was something that I hadn't done. Uh, looking back now, I wish I'd done it years ago. I'd have been three or four more years accelerating into my, into my journey. <clears throat> but having, having someone that you can talk to, you know, people have their dads, their mums, that, that's great for life coaching. And if your dad's a, a successful multi, um, multi-business multi owner, that's even better. Uh, you can go there and listen to him. But actually, but most, people, it, most people don't have that. Yeah, but I have to stop you there, Jackie, because you, you're right there. I, I, I agree in what you're saying. But a lot of people's mums and dads, they built, they built their businesses in an era before the internet. Correct. Right? Yes, and, and I, was just, I was about to come on to that. Yeah, you and, and, and you're right. You know, they, they did it in the way that they did it. But a lot of it isn't relevant to today. Relevant today. Yeah. The you, principles are relevant, but actually the, the execution is, is yeah. way off the mark. It is. Yeah. 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 Ex- I, know, I don't know. You've got experience of that. Well, yeah, well I have, because obviously I, I've got some big, um, some big sort of business, business people within, within my family. Um, and you know, it's funny it because I, in, I, the business were all built in an era prior to 4.0. Yeah. Because I talked to them and yeah. a lot of the things when I'm, when I start talking about sales funnels or I start talking about Facebook ads or I start talking about, you know, how to use LinkedIn and all that, and they, they look at me in the bewildered way because that was, that wasn't how they built their businesses back in those days. Yeah. It was a total diff, totally different world. So I think you're right. You do need to reach out, but you need to make sure you're reaching out to people that are, that are relevant, relevant and current now. Um, but in fairness though, Jackie, as you know, you know, a lot of that can be done for free with audio, yes. audio books and, and podcasts. And podcast. I mean, you, you go into a podcast app now and I've still got friends that I say to them, you know, what's the latest podcast? Oh, I don't listen to podcasts. I'm like, what? Get yourself on it. Well, actually, that was, that was that's, yeah, that's that's say conversation. That. Yeah. So when, when we first started um, the podcast, I'd say to my, my students in the class, right, we're doing a podcast. 90% of them didn't know what a podcast was. So they were in that position I was, and we thought about actually doing it. Well, what's a podcast? Who wants to listen to us? So they don't understand how to access it, and they don't understand the, the, the wealth of knowledge that is out there you yeah. know, to allow them to, to, to self-develop. So the so we looked at the, the consultancy and the digitization piece. Um, and so that, that, that was probably that. So like you said, that was probably first without us yeah, even. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. The, pod, the podcast followed. Um, obviously, the skills thing probably was the third thing on the list. So obviously, we had the conversation about skills. Um, I turned around to Jackie and said, "Well, why don't we why don't we approach Melody in America?" And um, you know, I knew that I was probably one of about six schools in the UK using skills. But I, I could already see just how well it was working within my school. I mean, in the, in the year and a half that I had been using it, it doubled, it easily doubled the amount of students that I had. I think at one point I had nearly, nearly 150, 150 or so ninjas on there. And then, you know, so it pretty much doubled my school. And then obviously we talked about then approaching Melody and seeing if we could become their UK partners. And we sat down, didn't we? And we wrote them a letter and yeah. then, um, you know, they came back and they said, well, yeah, I like the idea. Give us your proposal, which we did. We wrote the proposal in sort of three months down the line. Boom, we was in America signing the contract and partying 
like we've never parted before. Uh, so it's almost half killing Gavin. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and, and doing, like I say, and doing podcast over there. And again, and I think that was that was certainly one of the bigger defining moments um, this okay. year. Was, which was, <coughs> it, well, do you mate, think? I don't know if it was. It was it, you're right. It was a defining moment, but it it didn't stop there. Very very quickly, as we were we were picking up the the uh, the marketing and the interesting skills and really driving forward and, and getting getting it out there and people knowing about it. Uh, COVID hit. Yes. And that had a huge, huge impact on, on, on our schools as, as most martial arts instructors. So, you know, we were pretty it's much. It's a scary time. It's a scary post. time for a full-time yeah, very, instructor. Very, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a full-time instructor. So that was worrying for you. Uh, I'm part-time. So it's, it's, it's less concerning, but still, you know, I'd spend a lot of time, a number of years building my classes up. I think the only time, the only thing I don't do is, is just do it full time. So I do it's it. A good, it's a good job you got week. me. Good job you got me around to teach your students for you, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, th- there we go straight away. So we looked at okay, what what are, what are, what are the challenges of COVID? People are going to need video um, conferencing facilities. Yeah, everyone jumps jumping on Zoom. We'd already had an idea to deliver a, a video conferencing facility based on one to one training, wasn't it? Yeah. So the the idea was. And I remember, I remember having this conversation. We said, "Wouldn't it be great?" And this was about a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be great? Because I, I get a lot of uh, my students ask me for one-to-one training. They come to me, Mr. Cook, can we have a one-to-one or can we have a private lesson? And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, great, great, we'll do it." But again, you know, I'm teaching. It's time, five, it's time consuming. I'm teaching five, six times a week. We're running our other businesses during the day. I do have a family, I've got two children, and I want to want to spend some time with them. You know, you know, I, I, I do treasure my time with my family. I think it's important. So as much as, yes, you can earn money from it as a, as a uh, doing one-to-ones, it's the time you've got to book a hall or you've got to go to your school, you've got to, they've got to travel. And I was finding that nine times out of 10, the, um, the one-to-ones that we're doing were for students wanting to, um, wanting to improve their patterns or their catters or their forms or whatever you want to call it, whatever discipline you do. So I was, I was finding myself for an hour, pretty much sat down, watching people do go through their patterns, go through their forms. I thought, you know what, this could be done via video link. And I said to you, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could, we could develop a bit, a bit of software which um, students could upload their video, that goes to the instructor, they could pick the instructor they want to send it to, and that instructor analyzes that video in 15 minutes, and they've got a, they've got a copy of it, uh, and you can literally go through. So that was, again, that was a year ago, wasn't it? We had, mm. we had, that, we had, that, had that idea. So, um, and I had another, I say, was, was chatting, I was chatting to one of our mentors and I turned around to him and said, just before COVID, I said, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be great if there was a, um, a platform, a bit like Netflix that you could go on and there was instru- martial arts instructors streaming their classes from all over the world. And he turned around to me, typical film was like, well, let's build one then. And that's what we did. And we did. <laughs> and that's what we did. So we, we set out on the journey. Um, luckily we've, we've yeah, made it live. Yeah, TMMA.live. So the Motivated Martial Artist.live was the uh, was the platform. So we set off to build it, and um, probably three three months. Well, probably two months in, we had a uh, what we call eight the weeks, um, uh, actually seven weeks ago because I was the one building. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah endless there. So seven seven weeks in, we had what we call a, uh, a MVP, which is a minimum viable minimum product. Viable product again which is something, you know, you, you, you don't have to be the, it doesn't have to be the perfect model. It doesn't have to be that shiny stone that's been polished and polished. You just got to get something off the ground and go out to market with it and see how the market responded. So, so we did this, um, the market responded quite well. Um, and then we were getting requests for people to, you know, instructors were coming to them saying, oh, we, we want, we want one of those platforms. We want you to build us one of those platforms. So that led on to the TMMA gave, Academy. Gave birth to the Academy. The yeah. Academy, again, which is what I was saying earlier on about this journey. We didn't know we were going to go on, but all of a sudden it starts detouring and all these other products are coming off the back of it. So that's your, your school's video conferencing, online area and class booking schedule all in one package for an individual Academy or school. Exactly, yeah, which is, which yeah. is what we built, wasn't it? And then, and then, we, then we talked about, well, okay, well, that's great. We've got all these products. How are we going to get them all to market? But what we need, really, is our own marketing company. So uh, we set out and we built our own marketing company. And then we thought, well, okay, we're, we're okay at marketing. We're pretty good. We know the ins and outs. Who do we know that's an expert? So then we and found, we brought that expert in. Yeah, we found an expert and um, we offered them a deal. And they're now a partner in the business as well. So they came in. So again, it's all about surrounding, your pe- surrounding yourself with these people 
that are experts in their field. So um, we've all of a sudden, so a, a year a year down the line, not only have we got a podcast, we've got a, we've got a martial arts marketing company, we've got um, TMMA.live, we've got the TMMA Academy, we've just started writing our own courses. Oh, oh don't forget the book, Jackie. What about the book? Oh yeah, yeah, the, the best of Volume One that'll be out for Christmas. So yeah, so we've done we've 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 got all of the episodes uh, transcribed into a uh, a nice glossy book. So we're going to do it in hardback, paperback, and um, digital format. Obviously, we've got to put it in digital. So uh, that will be available in time for Christmas, and that's the uh, the top fifty episodes from Volume One. Hence, why we're starting this podcast off on Series Two, Volume Two, right? Yeah. Indeed, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah so, so, so in, in summary, it's been a whirlwind journey, hasn't it? It's, it's been, been an absolute yeah. roller coaster. You know, and it, it's been enjoyable all the way. And it'll be, it's going to be interesting to see, I think, where we are in a year's time as well, because mm-hmm. um, certainly the business side of it has really started to pick momentum up now. Um, there's a number of people in the UK taking up the skills packages now. Which is is great, you know. We just had one of our one of our good friends took um, took a skills package yesterday, and we we're really excited about helping him on his journey to to develop his school using skills as the sort of the, the child development side of it, which is, which is brilliant. And obviously, people you know people are running their schools; they need help with marketing. So now we have a marketing team that we can put them in touch with that can run their their marketing. And the best thing is they're going to be doing our marketing for us as well, Jackie, right? Yeah. So right, well, hopefully as we get out of lockdown, you know, we'll be on the front foot with the, in terms of our own personal marketing for our own schools. Uh, you know, the marketing for most instructors, including us, was done on our own backs. But I think now we've got a an affordable uh, package option for all the instructors to actually market to their, market their schools in a professional manner. I think, it, I think it will really pick up. And it will, the benefit will be, um, you know, supporting those instructors on that digital marketing journey. And, you know, the proof's in the pudding. We were doing pretty well when we didn't have an expert. Now we've got an expert. You know, we want to spread that wealth and wealth of knowledge to other schools. So if, it's a, if that's something that you're interested in, you know, just get in touch and we can, we can talk to you about that and point you in the right direction. Yeah, so our new website is called uh, tmma.media. So w- When's that launching? End of the month, Gavin? No, it should be launching by next weekend, all going well. Okay, we're just finishing, finishing off the, uh, the final touches, got a few more bits and pieces to add in, a few more product lines to add in, um, and that'll be launching yeah, over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully next weekend, if not next weekend, the weekend after. So, okay. so yeah, so it's, it's been an exciting journey. There's been lots of stuff going on. And there's still more to do. Yeah. There's still loads more to do. So we've got another 50 best episodes to put out. Yeah. I think we've, we've done about 20 already, haven't we? Yeah, well, I think we've all, yeah, I mean, over over lockdown, it's been awesome because we've, everyone's been in. So I think we've recorded probably, yeah, 15 yeah, to 20 15 in, to, in the, in the back yeah. library, haven't we? Which yeah. we'll be releasing again every Monday. Every Monday morning, they'll start coming out. We've had a break of, what, four weeks or something? Four like weeks, four, yeah. Four or five weeks, which I think we needed. Needed that, and then obviously we're going to get... Yeah, volume. the audience needed it. All the listeners needed it. They're fed up of listeners waffling on, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, not this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, well, that, there's a good point. So, more, more of the same to come in terms of the podcast. And, uh, you know, if you do need support in your, in your schools, I suppose it's about reaching out to us and, uh, and, and seeing if we can help you. And if we can't help you, one of our team, and if, we, if one of our team can't help you, we'll point you in the direction of someone else that can, I suppose. Yeah, you, but you're right. I think we've, you know, there was lots of things that we didn't know and we reached out for help. We reached out and got mentors. We've reached out to specialists. We've, we've sort of surrounded ourselves with people that are on the same journey as us uh, mm-hmm. of self-improvement. And if they don't have the answers, then they, they know someone else in their network okay, yeah. that have got the answers. So I think it's, don't try and do it on your own. We've been lucky. More, more importantly now, as we're coming out of lockdown, everybody needs support. We've been supporting each other through the COVID. Let's support each other to get out of COVID and, and, and get our industry firing again, really firing. Because nobody really knows what the future, what the future is going to hold, right? With COVID. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so we'll wrap it up there then, Gavin. Thank you for your time, my good friend. Yeah, and you, buddy, and I'll uh, catch up with you after this call, probably. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Okay, catch right. you later. Yeah, mate. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your listening platform. It would be awesome if you could also leave us a review. We really appreciate your value feedback. Also, check out our website, themotivatedmartialartist.com. We also have a YouTube. Instagram, 
LinkedIn, Facebook page and Facebook group. All the links are available on the show notes below. We'd like to thank again our show sponsors, skillsconnect.co.uk, the world's leading children's development program for martial arts. If you're a martial arts school owner or instructor and are looking for some inspiration, ideas or drills for your children's classes, make sure you check the skills out.